Hey, what's up guys? This is Paul from the Sysadmin channel. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to configure and deploy Microsoft's local admin password solution. And we're starting right now. So just to give you an overview, Microsoft LAPS or local administrator password solution is an excellent tool used to keep track and manage local passwords in your Windows domain. The password is different for every single Windows machine and you can customize it per an OU basis. In my example, I'm using 14 characters for my workstations and 20 characters for my servers. So as you can see here, I've already started the Google search to download laps. You can download the 64-bit or 86 or 32-bit version, as well as the documentation. I've already have that here, so um, I'll go straight to the files that I downloaded already. So here I have the laps 64-bit version. I'll go ahead and run that locally on this Windows 10 machine first because I'm going to need the ADMX templates, the group policy templates to configure group policy. So I'll go ahead and right select the management tools. I want to run all the features from this hard drive. Just make sure that all that is enabled and installed. That'll give us the fat client, the PowerShell module, as well as the group policy templates. So once that all looks good, we can go ahead and click next here. And now we'll go ahead and click install to fire it off. This should only take a couple of seconds, but we'll go ahead and click on the UAC prompt to allow the device to install. And then click finish once we're done. All right, so now that we have that installed, we'll go ahead and open up PowerShell as an administrator. Once we have that open, we're gonna wanna import the module and then update the Active Directory schema. So in order to import the module, we'll type in import module admpwd.ps, that is the module name. And then we'll go ahead and update the Active Directory schema. And we can do that by typing in update admpwdad schema. And once we have that clicked, or once we do that, it should show us with a success status. So that looks good. So now that I got the Active Directory schema updated, I'm gonna go back into our Active Directory users and computers, and I'm just gonna to wanna to create two groups for administering the local passwords for servers and for workstations. So I'm gonna create a group called laps-server administrators, and these are gonna be the server administrators for uh, the servers OU, and I'm gonna create another group called laps computer administrators and as you guessed it, these are gonna be the administrators that are allowed to see the passwords for our workstations OU. So I got two OUs here, my servers OU and my computers OU that I'm gonna be adding a group policy and linking it to those OUs for the corresponding uh, policy. So I'm gonna go back into PowerShell, our PowerShell session, and I'm going to run a get AD organizational unit and filter by the name of servers and then output that into our server OU. This should give us the distinguished name for our servers OU. And I'm gonna do the same for the computer OU. So I'm gonna do another get AD organizational unit, filter name like computers. And that should give me the computers OU that we're looking for. So if I go ahead and type in servers OU, that should give us the corresponding OU that we're looking for. So once we have that, we're gonna allow the computer to write the password in Active Directory. So in order to do that, we'll type in set ADM PWD computer self permissions with the parameter org unit. And we're gonna start off by giving the server OU delegation rights. And you can see right there that the status was delegated. And I'm gonna up arrow and do the same thing with the computer OU. So now that our both computer and servers OU have that, um, the computer account should have the rights to write the password to Active Directory. The next thing on our list is we want to make sure that those groups that we created earlier have the ability to read from Active Directory to view those passwords. So we'll go ahead and set those permissions for those groups. Since this is a pretty long command, I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste it. But the command list is set admin password read password permission. We'll set the org unit to server OU and the allowed principal to our server administrators. We should see that the status is now delegated and if we up arrow and do the computers OU, 
it should be the same thing. So we want to make sure that the computer OU is giving rights to the computer administrators and the server OU is giving rights to the server administrators. And we can test that by running a find admin password extended rights with the identity of the organizational unit. So I can go ahead and type that in and then we'll select the property extend right holders, extended right holders. And this should give us the holders or the the people that have rights to that. So in this case, the server OU has the lap server administrators. And if we up arrow and change the server OU to computer OU, we should see that the computer administrators has rights to that OU. So everything is looking good on that part. The next thing we're going to want to do is open up SCCM to deploy the MSI to all servers and workstations. Oh, actually, one thing I forgot, I need to add the users to the groups. So I'll go ahead and add those in right now. Uh, I'll just set my P Contreras account as the member of both computer and servers OU or server administrator groups. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to see anything. Um, so as I was saying, we'll go ahead and open up SCCM. And we'll go ahead and create the collection group so we can deploy laps to that group. So I'll start off by going to device collections, software deployments, and then we'll right click to create a new device collection. We'll go ahead and fill in the name Microsoft Laps. Uh, the limiting collection will be to, uh, let's see, all desktops and server clients. And then for the rule, I'm going to include the collections, um, all desktop and server clients. That way it deploys to all my workstations, but I'm also going to exclude my domain controllers. And I already have a group for my domain controller. So once we exclude that group, our collection query looks pretty good. Uh, we'll go ahead and click next on there. Confirm the settings and let it finish. Since it is green, we love green. So once I refresh that page, you should see 13 clients and workstations or servers and workstations. So now that we have our collection created, we'll go into applications and create a new application. So we want to deploy our LAPS um, MSI. And with SCCM, it's very, very simple. You just literally fill in the MSI and click next. Since we're not adding any customizations here, we can pretty much um, next, next through this. I will add a comment that this will change the local admin password for all clients. The publisher is going to be Microsoft, of course. The software version is going to be uh, 64, x64. And then for the installation program, I'm going to go ahead and add a B with a minus sign. That will suppress all errors and make it quite basic. So that is good. I'll go ahead and click next. We'll confirm the settings once again. And it should finish successfully okay once that's good we'll go ahead and close that and just like with anything with software deployments or applications we always want to distribute the content so I'll right click the package and select distribute content uh, we'll go ahead and click next here since I only have one DP in my environment I will select uh, the only one that I have we'll click OK there and confirm the settings again and then uh, close this once it completes successfully. So I have the content distributed. We should be able to see it turn green on the bottom right here and it does, so that's always good. So now that we have it distributed successfully, we're gonna wanna deploy it to our collection group that we created earlier. So I will right click it and select deploy. For the collection, we'll go ahead and click browse and set the laps collection group that we created earlier so i'll go to software deployments click on the microsoft laps we'll go ahead and click next to here and then since it's already distributed i don't need to redistribute it again for the action i'm going to set it to required 
That way all clients automatically get it without any user intervention. And for the schedule, I'm just gonna go ahead and leave that as is. I do want users to get this, so I will display all notifications in Software Center, and I want it to deploy, to deploy outside of maintenance windows. For the alerts, I'm not really interested in alerts, so we'll click next to here. And once again, we'll confirm the settings and let it complete successfully. Okay, so once we close that, we'll go ahead and hop on our Windows 10 machine, our Windows 10 client machine, so we can see uh, System Center deploy the LAPS pass or the LAPS application. So in order to speed that up, I'm gonna go into Control Panel, Configuration Manager, we can click on the actions tab and then we'll do a sync cycle on the machine policy retrieval. So once we run that, our lapse deployment should be coming in pretty soon and there's our notification right there. So it should install um, fairly quickly. It shouldn't take more than a minute or so. As you can see, it already installed on mine. It took less than a minute. So that's installed. And now we can head on over to our ad machine, admin machine so we can deploy our group policies. Um, so I'll go ahead and open up uh, Group Policy Management, GPMC, right here. And then since we are going to deploy it to the servers and computers OU within our home OU, um, that should be good enough there. So I'm going to go ahead and right-click on the Group Policy Objects to create a new object. I'm going to call this Lapse Server Policy for our server policy. It's pretty self-explanatory. I'm going to create another one for our computer policy. And that's done. So now as far as the settings that go into the GPO, I'm going to click on Edit. And the actual policy is going to be under Computer Configuration, Policies, Administrative Templates, Lapse. And then from here, there are four policies that we should be uh, seeing. So the first one is going to be the password settings. I'm going to set that to enabled. For our servers OU, I'm going to set it to 20 characters. And for the complexity, I'm going to leave it at the strongest one, which includes special characters, numbers, letters, and or small letters and big letters. So the next setting is going to be the name of our administrator account to manage. If you don't have the default administrator account, this is not really necessary. So we can leave that not configured. Next up is our policy to enable the password policy longer than the expiration time. Uh, it's not really needed in my case, so I'll click next to not configured. And our last policy that we're prompted with is the enable local admin password management. This is the actual policy that enables the password settings, so we'll set that to enabled. If not, um, none of the passwords are, or none of the computers are going to write to Active Directory. So just as a really quick recap, I'm going to enable the password settings and the enable local admin password management. I'm going to go ahead and close that and go into our computer policy. And I'm going to set the same settings as we did on the server policy. So I'm going to go into computer configuration, policies, administrative templates, laps. And here I'm going to set the password settings to the default 14 characters. And um, that pretty much looks good right there. I'll leave that at the default. And I'm going to enable the password management so computers actually are able to write to Active Directory. So that looks good. I'll go ahead and close this for now since we are we don't have any more settings to, to edit. So now if I go into the computer policy and click on the settings tab, we should see that the policy is set. So I'm going to go into details and disable the user configuration since there are no user settings on this GPO. And I'm going to do the same for the server policy as well. We'll click OK to that. So now that we have those policies created, we're going to want to link those policies to the proper OUs. So I'm going to start off first with the computer OU and then link the computer policy. Uh, we'll click OK there and then we'll do the same for the servers OU and link the existing policy for the servers. All right, so once we have that done, we're just gonna need to go into our client machines and do a GP update so we can force the policy on the um, on the client side. So I'm gonna open up PowerShell really quick right here and then do a GP update slash force. And this should get us the policy that we need. Um, I'm gonna go in and do the same thing on this uh, 2012 machine. So we can 
test both Windows 10 and Windows Server 2012. So on my 2012 machine over here, I have the PowerShell open. And I'm just gonna run the same command, gp update forward slash force. And once that completes successfully, we'll go back into our admin machine, clear the screen. And then here I'm gonna run a get admin password for the computer accounts, um, pack-win1001 and pack-fs01. Win1001 is my Windows 10 machine. And you can see that the password there is uh, looks around 14 characters. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing for FS01 and we should see that the password is longer. So in order to test that, I'm gonna copy the password string right here. And in PowerShell, there is a method called um, length that you can use to see the length of the characters or how many characters are in a certain string. So in my Win10 password, there are 14 characters. And if we do the same thing for my FS01 password, we should see that the length or characters are 20. And that looks about right. So the next thing we're gonna do is go into our Laps UI uh, GUI. And we can basically see the same thing here. So in the computer name, I'm gonna type in pack-win1001. Uh, let me add that dash right there. And if we click search, we should see the same password as we did with the PowerShell command. I'm gonna go ahead and replace Win10 with FS01 so we can see the password for our Windows 2012 file server. And those passwords do match. So let's say you had a scenario where you give a user the local admin password for a machine and you didn't want them to have the password anymore. Within Laps, you have the ability to set a new expiration time on command. So in my case, if we wanted to reset the password for this machine, I can set it to any date that I want and we should see that the password changes. The only thing is that you have to wait until the pol our group policy resets it so it can send back the new password. So here I'm gonna do an invoke command on my Windows 2012 server. And this basically just lets you send a remote command to a, to a, a, to a remote computer. So in this script block, I'm gonna set the GP update slash force so we can automatically update that policy on the file server. And if I go back into my laps UI, um, we should see that the password has changed to a different one. So that about wraps it up for today. Um, if you have any questions on laps or if you have any questions on setting it up or anything like that, Go ahead and let me know in the comment sections. And if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button as well. Until next time, this is Paul with the SysAdmin channel, signing out.